Good morning, everyone. It's 8.30 a.m. here in Germany. It's very cold <laughs> and I'm very excited because I will meet an amazing personality in half an hour. Yevan Song from South Korea. She is a outstanding creative coder with an amazing work. It's very interesting what she does. So she follows this methodology of user anti anti user friendliness and creates web experiences that shift the boundaries of what we think what's possible with web technologies and the web browser and what we've learned through you know 20 25 years of completely commercialized internet um, yeah she breaks all the rules and shows us what the internet could be like let's kick this off <laughs> i'm excited see you in the zoom chat zoom call Yeah, maybe uh, before um, Yivan joins the meeting, maybe we can have a quick look at her website, which is incredible. First of all, we see a map or something like a map here, whatever this is. So we can click on something and then we see a work. Um, wow, this is really anti-user friendly, but at the same, t <laughs> at the same time, it um, it just triggers this intention or this, this wish of exploring what's behind this mysterious uh, infographic here, right? Super interesting. Um, this is a website she created for a client, I guess. This is an exhibition or something. I, I don't I don't know exactly. Imagine that you're standing in a micro studio of a street artist, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. This seems to be in, has have an exhibition context. This is the menu about IFA, are you for real? It's an interdisciplinary project organized by the visual department of IFA, okay. Institut für Auslandsbeziehung in Stuttgart, Germany. Okay, so this is a cultural project. The thing is that she uses CSS, JavaScript and HTML to create that kind of three-dimensional spaces, which is absolutely outstanding and super unusual. Um, I mean, Wow, I didn't see that before. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay. I don't know how to get back. Okay, I can click on... on. Oh, I can go to the left and the right here. Okay, I get it. Wow. You know, the thing is that that kind of user experience just triggers the wish to explore. Um, it's more like... it's. It's not really like, okay, here everything is well organized and easy to perceive. It's more like, hey, here's something that you can explore, that you can dig into and, and see how it works. It really invites you to spend some time with this place and with this um, website. And wow, I love that so much. That's an amazing project. Back home, let's see what we have here. Uh, yeah, she, some of the, her works are completely um, optimized or built for specific devices like mobile devices or desktop devices. Okay, as you can see, we are in Germany. Germany has a very, very slow internet sometimes. So um, I sometimes wonder that my um, stream doesn't doesn't work when I just stream to YouTube or when I have a video call. I never had the case that it just didn't go on. And to be honest, at the moment, I don't know where to click. It's overwhelming. It's a lot of stuff and everything looks so interesting. I don't know exactly which one I should click. Okay, I found this one especially interesting. Okay, I can't go to YouTube for any reason. It is blocked. But this is a website. It's kind of a portfolio show where you can navigate through. Oh, man. Navigate through um, student portfolios that are uh, PDF files, basically. And uh, yeah, you can check out what uh, the works of the students of this Bergplatz Typography summer school, uh, what they just created in 10 years of this um, of this institution. My goodness, I, <laughs> it's very difficult to watch all this amazing work and speak at the same time. I hope you can follow me anyway. Um, yeah, it's absolutely outstanding work, I think. Yeah, and this one is a classic, right? So um, I've seen this page and I didn't really believe that this could be done with uh, HTML and CSS. So every time you click on something, the complete layout rearranges in a gen with a generative algorithm. Oh, okay, there she is. Hey. Hey. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you well. Yeah, I can hear you as well. How are you doing? 
I'm good. I am doing good. Yeah. Awesome. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was really looking forward to, to meet you today. <laughs> Yesterday, I've been also checking out some of your talks from the last times and just like your talk at the talks conference and also at Elisava, which was very inspiring. So uh, yeah, I'm mean, <laughs> super cool. Oh, sorry, sorry, Yevan. I forgot something very important. I forgot to go mm. live on YouTube. That's what I promised. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. This is Tim and uh, Yevan. Hello, world. It's amazing to have you here. Um, well, basically, this is a discussion with me and Yevan, and I wanted to ask her a little bit about um, absolutely outstanding work. Yevan, thank you so much for joining. I'm absolutely excited and also a bit nervous. <laughs> I've been watching all your talks yesterday on YouTube. Maybe you can introduce yourself quickly to tell us about who you are and where you're from and where you're right now, what you're doing, etc. So hi, my name is Yevan. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm a web designer and developer, but I try to like make a website more like um, non-commercialized and like thinking about what can I do using this web technology and what is the limitation that we are having right now because of this uh, commercialized website and how can we break this um like invisible like barrier of the web design and kind of like expand it further. That's super cool. So you are in Seoul, right? Um, yeah. And you are, are you born in Seoul? Yeah, I was born in Seoul, born mm -hmm. in Seoul. So I was like almost fully educated in Seoul, Korea. Wow. Okay. And you, I think you studied graphic design. Is that true? Yeah, I mm. I major visual communication design. Oh, okay, just like just me. The graphic design. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's that's cool. All right. I would like to know how did you. Let's say, I mean, you, you already told me that you've been working as a web designer in, in, I think, agencies or companies, and you just created this very templatey and standardized websites. Um, mm -hmm. So what I find extremely interesting is I know many people who design websites and they try to break the boundaries of, of, of well, of the conventions, but mostly they struggle with having not the skills to implement own solutions for interactions, for example. So how did you motivate you or where did your passion for breaking these boundaries come from? How did you, what were your thoughts and why did you really kick off this very difficult path, by the way, to learn web technologies in such a deep sense by yourself? Um, I think that when I am dealing with the website, especially those templatized website, I always think that um, website is very much limited and only think about like a limited users and those like a limited users usually doesn't include um mini minor cultures such as like in Korea for example like we are in the Asian country but like we are not able to use our own language using the web technology or even the domain we are not able to make Korean domain for example so I kind of feel like this um templatized or like major user centric web template is very much um making us isolated and I kind of feel like why do we have this environment and how can I change it so there was like a very basic motivation I think that the because my culture background is coming from those um so so South Korea which is like a minor country um really motivated me to like how can i break this um or ignore users for example or ignore cultures and how can i like make it wider and how can i modify mod modify this um so like that was like a very basic mo motivation and i just w really want to change this environment because like i somehow was a little bit scared of like this uh, environment going to those countries, to those like um, direction that um and always pushes us to like follow this template and follow this environment. Um, kind of like I just don't want to do that. So I try to like motivate this on um, web design and web templates. Um, and those motivation really just just coming from those motivation, I started to learn web tool and web code because like. I thought like I need to like do code by myself to actually like realize what I'm imagining. Um, so like it was, it took 
long time for me, I guess. Like it took at least two or three years to understand how the code works and understand how can I build my own website. And I'm still learning new technologies and new web libraries, for example. But um, it wasn't impossible for me to like make my own website and change, start changing those old website. Okay, that's very cool. Um... Yeah, I have, I have to, you know, what, what, what I really like about your work and what I think is absolutely, you know, I'm dealing a lot with the philosophy of creative coding. That's why I went back to university to study again and to think about why is creative coding or what kind of things can we do with it, not just in a creative or a artistic and design and commercial sense, but more in a way how we can shift our mindsets towards a more liberal uh, world of technology and that's what i really love about your project because i think when we talk about the internet we mostly talk about what huge corporations present us as the internet like you know these absolutely streamlined and and commercialized environments we think that you know video platforms social media ne networks are the internet but what i really love about your work is that you show people that it can be much much more than this it can be something that is completely unexplored. It can be so much fun at the same time and so individual, so everybody could express themselves in a way that fits to the individual personality. And it kind of reminds me very much about the internet back in the 90s when net art was rising and people were creating web experiences that had nothing to do with the stuff that we see today. What do you think about net art, by the way? Are you Do you... Um, are you into net art? Is that something that you've researched or does your inspiration come from net art anyway? Um, I think I was born in 1995. So I was born after those net art boom was already like already like finished, I'll say. Because like when I was like in the 90s, I was only like five years old. So I don't really have any memory. Um, I just thought like the internet environment is really weird. I think that is because my background is graphic design. And when you think about like a visual communication design, there are so many like extreme experiments using uh, visuals and making posters, for example, they try to like make more crazy poster. And that was pretty fine in graphic design field. But like when we are dealing with web design, which is the graphic part of the graphic design as well, like yeah. people are so much focused on the user friendly or template based and UX UI experience and I thought like that was really weird and I can change it using those like um, knowledge that I have when I'm dealing with the poster design or editorial design so I, I think that was the uh, basic motivation that I kind of like maybe I can change this web environment and I can I started to do like much different uh, experiments using those web technology. And after that, I just listened to lots of comments like 90s net art and were like similar to those 90s experiments. And I kind of like from that point, after I already done this experiment, I started to research those 90s web, web art and net art. And it was like shocking to me that there were already a exper lots of experiments using this web technology when, when we first have this um, web technology but like at one point people stopped doing that um because of the cooperation or because of the because they don't really think that internet is the best place to do the experiments i don't really know but like it was really shocking to me um and after that i really fell in love to the net art but like i would say uh, net art wasn't really the first motivation that i work in this experiment on web mm. environment yeah, I've got so many thoughts on this because um, I also studied graphic design or communica visual co communication. Basically, I studied communication design at the Münster School de uh, of Design. And um, for me, it feels totally weird today because we are, you know, pe the teachers that try to teach the students how communication works. And they do this through teaching typography and editorial design on static media these teachings become more and more irrelevant because things are fluid, things are flexible, things are completely systematic and have to be thought in a completely different way. And 
when I go to my Instagram feed, for example, I, I have a very, very difficult relationship with Instagram. Um, so it's really a very important platform for me and my work. But at the same time, I feel absolutely inconvenient there. It's like a, it's a, like, I don't know, it feels strange. But what, what, what I want to say here is, when I go to my Instagram feed, I see typography all over the place. People create new typefaces that look the same as Helvetica or Times New Roman. Sell this as something very new, something very innovative. And I very often think, why don't we establish a culture in um, design education where we don't think anymore too much about the things that are already very good? We have to focus much more on the things that are really the way we communicate today. I mean, designing a font is... It's, it's so repetitive, it's so conservative, and it leads to a situation where people are dropped onto the market um, that won't find a good job in the end, right? Communication yeah. is the internet, and designing also should include web technologies. And sorry, I'm talking a lot about, about that thing, but I find very interesting that corporations are making technology more and more complicated. And that's also a point I would like to discuss with you. You told me that you don't use that many frameworks, just as me. I try to avoid any kind of dependency in my teaching. I try to make my students focus as much as possible on the very core and the basic fundamental principles. How do you deal with um, complexity in your code and with libraries? And the, yeah, how do you deal with that? Um, I, at one point, I, because like I always, always have the pressure that I need to learn all those like the web technologies that huge corporations do so then I can develop the website that they can do as well too because and then I kind of feel like do we really need that actually you know like if the internet is is the internet that much better place and if the even though I use the web technology and even though even after I use those frameworks and make a website much faster, um, is that really what I want to create and is that what people really want in their, when they're using the websites? I do agree that those uh, huge corporations make web, web code really complicated and make a gap between developer and non-developer and obscure obscure everything so then people are not able to even imagine what is going on when they are using the internet and that really causes people to like stop really trying to understand what is what they are doing when they are using the internet and i just really think that that is really not fair because like people especially like for me who are not using english as the first language like all the cookie polishes policies are in English so we are not even able to like read it but like we need to upgrade it without any choice in order to use the website and etc like I think I don't really agree that like I know like at one point internet should be used as connecting people in all different countries but at the same time this obscuring and this um, not clearing the technologies that they are using and this complex um, environment for the technology really doesn't really help us to like when we are using the internet. And I just wanted to wanted to make a website that is not using those frameworks and that is not using those complex um, code, um, but still workable websites. So like, I don't really say that that direction is wrong and we need to remove that direction. But I just want to say that there should be more diverse in when we are dealing with the internet. And those the website that I create should be different from the website that they are creating. And that was like a like somehow like a philosophy or something that I want to achieve in there when I'm dealing with the website. So I try to like use less frameworks or less libraries or, you know, like Angular or like those Node.js kind of like backend code, but just still want to make an uh, experimental website and still want to approach people using the simple technology. So like, I know like some of my website looks really complex, but like you already know that in code side, it's not a complex website, right? It's just a CSS trick. Yeah, I think the trick in your case, especially or so, is that you are using web technologies a bit different because you learn patterns or you're taught patterns yourself that, um, yeah, that you've just have in your toolkit now and you can use them. I mean, I'm absolutely blown away by all your 3D experiences. I know that you 
I mean, I mean, people don't know how hard it is to use CSS to create 3D experiences. This is completely different than using P5.js, for example. I mean, in P5.js, we have this 3D mode and we can quickly uh, create something very complex with just a few lines of code, but CSS is different. At the same time, it comes with so many possibilities, especially in terms of interaction, in placing typography in a proper way. I created this group, Crazy Code Developers, about, I think, seven years ago on Facebook, which was a community on, on, uh, on Facebook, which connected people that aimed to create stuff like that. I mean, um, learning web technologies to create very crazy websites and create web experiences that definitely challenge the way how we perceive web websites at these days. And um, yeah, but I think you are still at the very top of all these people. And I really like the philosophy to say, learn the basics. I get so many questions about, hey, what about 3JS and P5JS? Why, what, what kind of technologies should I focus on? I think it's much more important to understand the principles. And you can basically learn the principles with every programming language. And HTML and CSS and JavaScript is a massive foundation to create a lot of very, very cool stuff. Okay, um, what about the School for Poetic Computation? I think uh, Zach Lieberman is also a rising star on this creative coding um, sky. <laughs> um, right. What did you learn there? What did you learn in New York when you just went to the School for po Poetic Computation? School for Poetic Computation is a um, school based, based in New York. And it's like the, the strong point, the best advantage of this school is that they have so much powerful in creating a community. So like they collect every year, they um, collect students from different fields. For example, there are like um, students who, are, who don't know like code at all, but like just know the art. And there are some students who don't know the art at all but like um has the background of the computer science and they collect those students and those they have like the strong um power to create community so like we start to get gather like the knowledge that we have and we start to create something using sharing the knowledge and sharing the background and perspectives and it was really um the best experience because it helped me to like not only learn the code, but like somehow expose myself to the code area and somehow like started to start me to think about, oh, maybe I can use code as a material when I'm um, making a visuals. I know some part of the code, but like with, at the very beginning, when I entered the uh, School for Poetic Computation, I, I was still like obsessed with this idea that I need to learn code from the um, step-by-step. -step. There should be like some like a, way that I need to follow in order to like become a master of the code. But like in school for computation, they kind of like let me to like explore and like experiment code, even though you don't really know the code. And I think that really helped me to like create my own way to like build a website. And that's um, and in the end, help me to like, for example, as you said, like I have like different way of using codes that affect that affected me to like create different websites or create different visuals. So like school for the computation helped me like the school has its own lecture and has its own class, but like the best advantage of the school for computation is that like you have this space and you have that friends that have different background and we start to share information and all the gifts. And like we each of us have um, start to find a way to learn um, what you want to learn, for example, art or code or something different. Um, in that um, location, in that space. Um, I saw a Medium post by um, on the blog of the School for Poetic Computation on, uh, on Medium, which was by a teacher. I don't remember her name anymore, but she seems to help people defining their artist statement. So I see your work um, very well defined. So it looks like for me that you have a very clear vision of exactly what you want to do. You've got these methodologies developed for yourself, like anti-user friendly. This seems to be the driving motor and uh, the fire that's burning inside of your creativity, right? So how would you mm, explain the process of finding that kind of artistic framework and vision 
defining it, using it, and also uh, what is necessary to do uh, well. I, I don't know exactly how to ask this question, but how did you, let's say, how did you find, what was the process of defining and finding that kind of vision for yourself? Um, so the main thing that I am still working on is uh, anti-user friendly or anti-user centric websites. And that theme was actually first, I, I first started to work in that theme during the School for Poetic Computations for um, semester. Because um, like I, I was, first of all, I was really shocked that the information that I can receive in New York is very different from information that I could receive in Korea. Because like these two technology, you know, like obviously US has much more um, knowledge and the um um fluency when they're dealing with technology, because like it's basically in English and it's from their culture. And I kind of feel like that was the very first point. That's that was the very starting point that I started to feel like this is not that much um fair environment for that this is not um the thing because uh, like i already think i always think that this internet is like um it's like a utopia that we are connects people all around the world and we have this fair environment and we are meeting people in a fair environment but actually it is not true like it really the way people like understand this web environment and use this web environment is very different based on the culture and based on their like knowledge and i think I first realized that during the school for poetic computation, and that was a motivation that me I can I maybe need to create or I maybe need to share this um 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 like an idea or the inspiration that I received during this school for poetic computation. So like every semester, every um ten week of school for poetic computation semester, we need to like do the final um exhibition in school and like that was the very first time that i create the artwork called anti-user friendly and there was like a three different artworks there and it was really good because like school property company there are lots of people coming to those exhibition and i was able to talk to them and share my ideas and i those like experience of sharing ideas and sharing thoughts really helped me that maybe this anti-user friendly is the right direction or the or the um direction that have possibility that I can explore more and explore expand further. Yeah, that's super cool. I really like it. You mentioned a bit um, that the, the the sphere in Cor in South Korea is completely different than the, what you've experienced in New York. So what I would like to know is how does it feel to be a creator? Well, I, I call you a creative coder because um, I've got some definitions that definitely fit into your work. So how does it feel to be someone who creates that kind of media art, media design, whatever in uh, South Korea? Do you have a community there for these topics or are you a complete outsider and uh, yeah. Um, I so my background is graphic design, and I didn't really have like lots of community in Korea to share on um, mm -hmm. or learn code. Um, still, like I guess I'm not one hundred percent sure, but I guess um, um, Korea is still like trying to learn code. I don't really agree with learning code, but like exposing yourself code and like mm -hmm. trying to. Like have the target first and use the code as a tool to achieve the target is my is the uh, perspective that I have when I'm teaching or learning code. But like in Korea, I think there are still like people still believe that we need to first learn code and get inspired or create something using that um, knowledge that you um trained from like for for example like a coding school for example. I just don't really like love that environment. So that is why I didn't really um, was in the co like a creative coding community in Korea. Um, I I don't, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but like, I think that um, that was like what I felt from the, from the experience that I have um, in Korea and in New York and in different countries that um, Korea is still not very much flexible that when they are dealing with the code, whereas New York um, or, for example, School for Trade Computation is very much um, 
flexible dealing with and accepting different uh, knowledges for different code approaches when they are dealing with the technologies. Yeah, totally. I get it. For, I mean, the school for poetic computation, basically what's going on in the US from my perspective is absolutely different from everything uh, also here in Europe. So Europe is always or is still also way behind. I, I mean, you've been in Europe as well, right? You've been on tour kind of being at the <laughs> Ital and at the Durations Festival and all doing all these things in just a short time. How did you how did you perceive that? How did you like Europe and your journey and what were your impressions? I like besides this creative coding and besides my job, I always love meeting people from different culture. And mm -hmm. my family personally is very much diverse country and by diverse family. Like they, some of them are in New York, some of them are in US, US or mm -hmm. in Europe or in China, Japan, etc. So I was kind of like familiar with this um, international environment and like um the environment that i like people have different cultural background and different perspective is very much familiar to me and i just enjoyed um that kind of like a difference make new um knowledge or new like new perspective and why do my perspective is really something that i really enjoy while i'm traveling and meeting new people from different countries so that As I mentioned at the very beginning, I'm trying to, I, I'm planning to um, travel in New York after um, the exhibition that I'm preparing in Korea and like, et cetera. I'm trying to like keep myself traveling and going to different uh, areas and like not limited the knowledge that I already have right now. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. And uh, we were speaking a bit about uh, plans for the future. What, what kind of, Where do you see yourself in, let's say, a few years? Are you planning to stay in Korea, or are you uh, are you going to to back to America or something like that? Do you have any plans for that? Uh, I hmm. don't know yet, but I mm -hmm. I want to keep myself like traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I know that maybe that is impossible because I we have this environment that mm -hmm. um, we're not able to like move like as we used it to do like two or three years ago before COVID. Mm -hmm. But I just want to keep myself like traveling um, in different countries and like keep myself as Korean and keep my culture, but still like want to see how different environment and different culture have different knowledges and perspective, etc. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, okay. Okay, talking about COVID, um, I would like to know, did COVID also have positive effects on your life? Um, yeah, I think, but we are still like struggling how to solve this issue or if this um, problem is something that we can um, solve in the end or is there any like solution for this situation? But I think I just want to, so like in history, for example, there is like a hardship or there's like a hard environment will cause it the art to explore further and create new art or new um, um trend, for example. So I think that in terms of like culture or in terms of like way people dealing with the aesthetics or the experiments, um, I think COVID is a hardship and it's the It's a shame that we have COVID right now, but like it somehow helped us to like create something different or like think about what can we do or what can we uh, expand in, in this you know, new environment. So like there, are, I would say there are like a little bit advantage in terms of like a culture or the um, art, um, but still, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's a difficult question, but I'm to be honest, I'm personally totally fed up with all these bad news in, in, in the news and in the right. discussions about COVID. It feels like so overwhelming. I got to say that for me, it also had some positive aspects and I try to focus on that as much as possible to not go crazy because uh, yeah, it's very difficult <laughs> to, to not go crazy these days sometimes. But yeah, very cool. Um, Givan, I didn't I missed to check the chat. 
and we have a few people there. Uh, first of all, the first comment is by my friend Justin Lincoln from Walla Walla in uh, close to Washington. So uh, Justin, thanks for joining. It's amazing to have you here. He is also an artist and a creative coding educator who has been very early already in this creative coding scene. He has this Tumblr blog, which was my inspiration back in the days when uh, I felt like creative coding is an absolute outsider's activity. And he has had this blog, fyprocessing.tumblr.com, where he posts GIFs and videos of people working with processing. And, um, oh, this is, by the way, a good question. Did you use processing? Any, have you ever worked with it? Or um, is that, how do you perceive processing, basically? Um, I've worked with I've worked processing. Um, I think it's interesting because like, um, like partially I love coding itself, and I love like how to like uh, for example like a mathematics can create visuals and those code can create visuals is something that I am really fascinated in. But at the same time, I really love the web environment that like this is the environment that people are joining and like this is a new um world for example. So like I love create uh, I love processing, but like I stick into this internet world because I. Those the other parts that I love when I'm dealing with the web. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But I still yeah. right. Totally. Well, for me, um, and maybe that could be interesting for some of the viewers who are subscribers of my channel. I am since many months I'm preparing a web development, web art curriculum, like you know, to teach people how to use web technologies. I still, you know, I've been thinking so much about what technology I should use for my teaching, right? So I feel very at home in this processing sphere, but at the same time, I see so many possibilities in web technologies. What I love about processing is that it is really a great tool to onboard people for coding. You've got very quick wins. It's very easy to learn and you really understand the very basic principles, which are very difficult from my perspective to learn in a web environment, like for loops, variables, arrays, all that stuff It's very, has many more obstacles in this web development sphere and getting a head, your head around these very basic principles is much easier in processing. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm already thinking intensely about uh, how to teach people use web technologies. And that's definitely something I'm going to do in the next years to, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the web has so many amazing possibilities, um, creating spaces for us, for human <laughs> to, um, right. yeah, it, it's really great to create things that pe people can experience through a web address. It's just great. I love that. Yeah, yeah, and it's more like uh, layers and layers. Like people, like there are so many smart people who want to like create their own libraries, for example. Mm -hmm. So they create this layer and they put like a new layer on the top of the layer. And now we don't really know like who started this on um, tower of the layers and how can we fix this if there's mm -hmm. any problem. And I think that really shows us like uh, ecosystem that we have in society um, when we are dealing with web code because like there are some broken parts but we don't know how to start fixing this broken part because like, <laughs> there are so many people were involved and they were so anonymous right so mm -hmm. like those those kind of like um, small like um characteristic that the web coding have because um, it's an environment for the people uh, really is the fascinating part for me and like a web coding is really interesting in that. Absolutely. Part. The problem that I saw also is, um, you know, what's very motivating is that through, for example, a technology like processing, we can create results or artifacts like GIFs or videos, which are very easy to share and to generate. So mm -hmm. the way from uh, writing code and generating a video is much or something that is that can be shared on a social media platform, for example, or on a website is much uh, uh, shorter than the way of creating a website from my point of view. Mm -hmm. So um, that's also something I want to make, uh, bring people into the situation to have success moments where they feel like, whoa, I created this and I shared this and people react, can react to this and can empower each other. So I want to make this uh, way as short as possible. And that's also a benefit that, that I see in processing. Right. Um, I see many people um, loving PFAF.js and I'm also very in love with that technology, but at the same time, I feel like 
for my yeah it's it's really i've been fighting with this a lot to be honest right. i've been thinking right. a lot about what is the right way and by the way talking about teaching uh what do you would you like to teach basically one day um i do teach um in school like once in, uh, one class in one semester like like a very small classes mm -hmm. and i do have like a little classes but like teaching is not my major job um mm -hmm. for now and i kind of like I do love workshops and stuff, but like maybe I don't know. Like I don't really want to teach right now because like mm -hmm. I love um creating weird things, but like it can be a little bit overwhelming <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> like new coders, and you know like so I don't really am interested in teaching right now. But I think mm. that. Um, it's oh, it's very interesting when I go to school and do the work, one week workshop, for example, that like those like um, limited amount of time and those like the inspiration or the imagination that students have is really inspiring all the time. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that is um, maybe um, I do enjoy workshops and maybe the long term workshop. Maybe I consider teaching as a long term workshop. Then mm. in the future, maybe I would love to teach students. Yeah, I've got some time. I think it still can do right. amazing work. And yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will have a look into the chat. And now people started to post questions, which is amazing. There's a question. I don't know if that question is for me or for you. Uh, Justin, hi, Justin, <laughs> writes, uh, Are you in touch with? Uh, Tai Won Choi these days. Do you know that name? Yeah. Tai Won Choi. I did a workshop of as a student of Taiwan. I admire what he does and I wish I could have done school for poetic computation to uh, try to bring some of that spirit into the classroom, but it's difficult. Tae Won Choi is Korean American. He created school for poetic computation with the with Jack oh. Lieberman and the other people there. And um, yeah, I, I think that like, it's surprising that like the lectures or the classes or the uh, differences between um, people who are un the understanding of the code in school for poetic computation, like the lectures are not, it is amazing lectures and there are amazing teachers in school for poetic computation, but I would say the best part of the school for poetic computation is not coming from the lecture itself. Mm. It's more like a community and how people like keep the community even after the semester is the most uh, advantage. So like there were some students who don't really know code at all, um, but still was in school for poetic computation and kind of like, like town week is a short term to learn code, right? So like, even the last day they don't really are not the master of the code but still um they were in that um sfc community and that ended up helping them to create um some different artwork that they different from what they have done before they come to school for creative competition mm -hmm. so yeah i don't really know that that will answer the question but Taeyun is um um um, I would say he's one of those people who want to create um, internet, understand internet in a different way and how can we like make a better environment in web environments. I try to like make the solution or figure or expand the perspective by like creating a different website and creating um, or writing things about anti-user friendly and etc. Um, he works on the performance um, side. Um, he do the performance as his own artwork, and he tried to like, like he has like a similar perspective. I was affected a lot from him, so he has the similar perspective. He wanna like create a more like a fair environment and more like a different environment, different environment. But he trying to like so or visualize it using the performance as a material. Super cool. I definitely got to check his word out. His work out. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, nice. Okay, he's 
uh, another one. I absolutely love your work, Ivan. Do you plan, and this is a thing by, this is a question by Eduardo Guido. Do you plan on releasing courses online or open a Patreon to learn more about your methodology and how you create your works? I mean, you already um, answered that, but maybe you can. Yeah, I um, I have like a lot of workshops this year. So I will be traveling a lot in New York and after that I will be in Europe. Um, um, I will definitely let you know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm not about that. Um, but I don't really have fun to make up online class or etc. Um, mm. I, I for now, I just want to focus on how to change the perspective that they have when they are dealing with the internet, rather than um coding or the computer language itself. So I would more focus on the workshops and conferences this year. Yeah. Cool. So I don't really have fun. For so if you're in Europe, just let me know. Maybe we can have a real coffee one day. Uh, then we yeah. can meet anywhere. That would be really amazing. And maybe we can make something like a part two of this talk because I really enjoy it so much to speak to you. Yeah. For me, that's that was a super cool uh, conversation. I really enjoyed it. So do you have any, any more things you want to say or anyone you want to greet or any questions you want to ask someone here? Let us know. <laughs> I think I personally think it was um um good to hear that you said like at the very beginning the um, talks that I have done like last year and the year before was very different because like I tried to like expand my uh, experiments not only like creating something fun but like more creating uh, architecture structure and I mm -hmm. if in the theme of the entire user friendly I'm trying to like explore a different way to like. Mm -hmm. Um, make a website or different um, methods and different technologies. And this year I have like several exhibitions and I'm trying to like how to install the artwork in the physical place using web technology and how can I how can I combine this physical environment into this virtual environment is the um, thing that I am still being that I will focus on, on working on for this year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe if we can, if we are able to meet this year, later this year, maybe I might have like some different artwork using different methods. Maybe we can talk about that as well. 100%. Absolutely. I would love to. Definitely. Yeah. I think um, what I said in the beginning is that I saw your talk at the talks conference and I feel like what I see is that you become much more it looks like you've become much more convenient in working uh, or in, in explaining what you do in your work. And also this overall methodology, this anti-user friendly um, explanation also on your slides on the Elizaba um, talk was very important for me because I think this is really an eye opener for people. They see that there is one idea that you follow and this makes the whole thing much more easy to understand, right? So. It's very powerful and I'm working on this so intensely in my studies to define who I want to be and what kind of role I want to play and how I want to, you know, want to use my energy, right, to bring something into the world. And I see the same pattern in your work. You've got something like this methodology statement and uh, it's very, very cool to see um, how, yeah, how, also how strict you are with following that path and how clear everything gets when we understand that this is the philosophy you follow. It's amazing. It's really, that was really an epiphany and an, an, an eye opener for me to see, okay, this is super easy to understand. And this is Yvonne Song. Really cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining this discussion. And uh, yeah, looking forward to meet you one day in real life. I would love to. And uh, yeah, for now, I wish you a good evening. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, have a wish we can meet later this year as well, too, in person. And yeah, have yeah. a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Hey, this was my community spotlight with the amazing Yevan Song. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I just want to say that I have a Patreon community and you can support my channel by becoming a patron. If you become a patron, you get access to all of my online courses for creative coding. So I create educational content for processing uh, and in the future other topics also on the creative process to work with code. Thank you for tuning in and see you hopefully soon. Bye bye.